This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here, and today we're going to do a Lightroom workflow walkthrough from good to great. I've got some photos here of some birds that I took on a recent Saturday morning, and I wanted to step through both my selection process as well as my workflow for developing the image to make it the best it can be. So in this case, I've got a series of images that I've taken of these cattle egrets, and they're in some wonderful plumage. As we scroll through, we can see some interesting poses. And so what I want to do is select the best ones. And in order to do that, I'm going to highlight multiple images here. And then I'm going to press the letter N key on the keyboard to go into survey mode. And I'm going to press tab to remove the side panels. Now I can start to weed out the images that are not as good as the others. For example, in this one, we have just a part of a bird. So I'm going to remove that one from the selection by clicking the X in the lower right corner. Likewise, I'm going to do the same here because again, we've got just a fraction of a bird. And this one has the same problem as does this one. So now we're down to the images that have both birds in the frame. And now we can start to select further. I like the way that the beaks line up in this image and this one. And here they're at odds. So I'm going to deselect this one and this one, as well as this one for that reason. Now we've got them all with their beaks pointing in the relatively same direction. But as I'm looking, I see that I like this one with the mouths open a little bit better. So I'll remove these three. And now I'm down to my final two. And I can see that this one is just a little bit sharper and a little bit clearer. So because this is the one I want to work on, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And that leaves me with this one image. So if I press G to get back to the grid mode, I'm left with that single image selected. I can press the tab key to bring my side panels back and I'm ready to develop this image. So what I'm going to do is go into the develop module by pressing the D key on the keyboard. And the first thing I want to do is crop this a little bit. I've got some extra space over here and it seems a little bit off center. So I'm going to click on the crop overlay, which you can also activate by pressing the letter R on the keyboard. And what I want to do is bring in the left side a little bit. In fact, I'm going to change the aspect ratio to eight by 10. And then I'll move this image over and that gives me just about what I want. If I look at the rule of thirds grid here, I've got some interesting things going on around the intersection points and that's kind of the effect that I want. So I'm going to, once again, click the crop tool to dismiss that, and we'll start working on developing this image. Now we have some interesting lighting here going on, but I think we can improve it. If we look first in the basic panel, I think we can stand to reduce the highlights and recover some of the detail in the brighter parts of this bird. Watch what happens as I drag the highlight slider down. Notice all the detail that comes back in in this area. Now I could take it all the way down, but it starts to become a little bit too dark and we lose some of the drama that makes this image interesting. So I'm going to put this back and I'll leave it right about there around minus 62 in this case. Now we may also want to brighten up some of the shadow areas to bring back a little more detail in those areas. And we can do that with the shadow slider. I'm going to boost this up and again, we can push it all the way to the limit and we can see that we're not getting a huge benefit by pressing it all the way up. What we're doing is bringing back some of the detail in the background, and that's not what we want, but a little bit helps. And I think we'll leave it right around there, approximately 36. Now images of birds can always use a lot of clarity. And so we can use this to boost the midtone contrast on our image. And I think maybe around 30 to 32 looks good right in there. So I like that. We've got a lot of drama and detail in this image, but there is still a ways to go. First, let's check a little bit more closely and we can see that there's a little bit of noise in there. So we can move down to the detail section and perhaps add just a bit of luminance noise reduction to help in some of these areas. And that looks good. A little bit goes a long way in this case. I'll zoom back out and we'll go down to the effects section and add a bit of a post crop vignette. For an image like this, bringing down the tones around the outside border can create a nice effect and focus the viewer on the center of the image. So that looks pretty good. But now we've got some finishing touches to do. Here, the faces of these birds 
are in the shadow and they're not capturing the detail the way that I'd like them to be. So what we can do is we can go further than we did with the vignette just now and we can add a radial filter. We add the radial filter that will allow us to selectively dodge and burn in certain areas of the photo and what I want to do is brighten up the faces of these birds. So I'll click on the radial filter and place the center right about here and then drag outward. What we have now is that we're brightening up everything outside of this oval and what I really want to do is brighten up what's inside the oval. So what I can do is click invert mask here in the radial filter panel and now we're working in the center. We can adjust the exposure and we don't want to go too far. We just want to add a little bit of highlight and a little bit of drama. I think maybe just a tiny bit more looks good. And notice that I've also added some additional clarity here in this area. Not too much, but a little bit. We can even add a bit of contrast just to bump up the drama just a little bit. Now this shape of the filter is not quite what I want. I want it to follow the contour of the bird's heads. So what we can do is rotate this just a little bit, like so. Maybe pull it in a bit. Maybe pull this down a little bit. And by doing that, we can place this bit of highlight right over the faces of the birds. So if I scroll down to the bottom of this panel, I can temporarily hide the effect. And we can see that we've done a good job of adding some highlight to the faces of these birds to make it more interesting. Once we're done with the radial filter, we can click here to dismiss the panel. And then there are a couple of finishing touches that I'd like to do. The first thing I'd like to do is brighten up the eyes just a little bit. In any image, the eyes can really make a photo pop, and we want to take advantage of that here. I'm going to zoom in, and what we're going to do is use Lightroom's Adjustment Brush tool. So I'll click here to activate that and I will alt click on Windows or option click on a Mac on this label to reset the brush. Now what I want to do is bump up the exposure. So I'll start with some added exposure and then I'll move over onto the image and size my brush accordingly. I want to paint right around the colored part of the eye here. And you can see that I'm adding some exposure as I go. So that's good. Now let's make the adjustment and get it dialed in exactly where we want it to be. We don't want it to be radioactive. So I think that looks pretty good. We can also add some contrast and some clarity to really boost the detail on the eyes. So I think that's got it. Now while we've got this adjustment active, I'm going to hold the space bar and pan over to the eye of the other bird and make a similar paint stroke around the colored part of this eye. I think that's got it. So we'll dismiss the adjustment brush and zoom back out. Now as a last cleanup, this particular bird has some debris on the beak here and I think we can get rid of that. And what we'll do is use the spot removal tool. We'll make sure that it's set to heal and that we've got a small brush and I'm just going to paint right over this area in this case, Lightroom did a pretty good job of selecting the source for that, but we can move this around if we need to, to pick the exact spot. But that's gotten it pretty close to what I want. So we'll dismiss that and zoom back out. And now we've cleaned this image up and we can take a look at the before and after. So I'm going to press the backslash key. There's before and there's after. So you can see quite a dramatic difference. We've taken this photo from something that is relatively interesting and we've given it a little bit more pop and a little bit more drama. And we've done it all within the develop module of Lightroom. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography tips, tricks, and other information there. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001. And you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.